Today we have an original version of a Hornby HST from 1980, which was the first production model, and I bought one of the first uh, locomotives that was available at the time. What I'm looking at today is uh, converting the model to DCC chip uh, working, because uh, that's how my mod layout works. Um, as you can see, unfortunately, the, the model itself is uh, somewhat old, and has uh, suffered from uh, the fact that I painted it with varnish, which has given it a, a distinctly uh, brownish tinge. Uh, eventually overcome this by weathering the locomotive, which may fe feature in a later video. So, very first thing to do with anything like this is to uh, assemble all the bits and pieces that you need to uh, put everything together with. So, first and foremost, I've got uh, the DCC chip itself, which comes in two parts for this particular one, which is the chip itself, and the actual harness. I will be cutting off the 8-pin plug on the end which uh, has actually been damaged at some point so I'm, I'm reusing that but uh, I'm going to cut all the wires off anyway. The other thing which always comes in handy a pair of pliers uh, which are fine tipped to hold things with. Uh, just in case the pliers aren't enough I'll also have a pair of tweezers which are needle pointed so they will be quite useful to get things out. Um, my trusty wire cutters uh, which are used from everything from electrical wiring down to the uh, very small wires we use on these machines. Um, again big chunky wire cutters which again will be used to uh, trim the wires. And a selection of screwdrivers this one's a nice flat blade one uh, with a bit of insulation on it because I use it for electrical work as well and lastly little tiny um, screwdriver for anything hard to get at. The other things I've got of course are um, some heat shrink sleeving which will be used to cover the wires that when I make the connections inside the locomotive and out of shot at the moment but uh, just about to appear is my trusty soldering iron um, which uh, was last used for burning some plastic so uh, it, it, there might be some a few minutes involved in uh, removing the plastic off that before we get started. Right, okay, so looking at the actual locomotive itself, um, so there's the actual uh, locomotive itself. Uh, I've already taken the top off to make life easier, um, so we'll just take that off. And uh, yesterday I spent the day taking the motor apart uh, and cleaning that all up because it hasn't been run for about 30 years. So it's got lots of nice little grease on it and it's running nice and well. Which is one of the first prerequisites for converting to uh, DCC. First thing is to make sure that the locomotive works quite fine, works quite well. And uh, just to show that, we'll, uh, we'll just show you it running on my test track on the floor. So here we are just down on the floor just so um, let's just see the locomotive, put the motor through its spaces. So there we are just to, uh, when the bench comes into the shop, just show it running around quite nicely at the moment. So just to show you that yesterday's cleaning job worked quite well. So uh, several hours of getting very, very oily and dirty has resulted in a nice smooth running locomotive. So here we are with the locomotive back on the bench now, so hopefully positioned so you can see what's going on. Uh, the front of the locomotive is this end, where the uh, white plastic is, which has got the little bulb in the front, which we'll hopefully still be using. Uh, we've got the motor itself here with its connecting wires. The diode, which uh, makes sure that the, uh, the light only operates in one direction, is there. And then we've got one of the uh, power lines, which connects to the back bogey, uh, connects to the motor there. Uh, one of the issues that we're likely to encounter with this particular engine is that, um, if I just turn this up a little bit, what we have here is a connection here which joins the two brush wires, or one of the two brush wires, directly to the actual bogey itself. So we'll have to cut that one there and then make uh, solder connections from here and there to the actual chip itself. So the first job with uh, DCC wiring is to completely isolate the motor itself from any of the wheels and metalwork, because we want uh, two sides to go into the chip and the other two sides to go to the motor. Now throughout this I'm referring to uh, a diagram which is just out of shot there, which is uh, 
uh, something which has been uh, copied from the Hornby website. So uh, th thanks to them for that. So this is a, a nice useful thing that I'm, I'll be working through just to make sure that I get my wires in the right place. So always worthwhile having. So uh, first step then is to uh, disconnect the DCC running from the locomotive and make sure that that works quite happily. So first things first, we will pull off uh, the wires. So first of all we take off the back bogey connection uh, which uh, comes off here. So we'll, we'll disconnect that one. Then rather more worryingly we'll have to uh, uh, cut if not lift this uh, connection off here. So apologies if my hands get in the way with this one because it's a little bit of a, an awkward one to get hold of. So we'll just uh, try and tweak this uh, bit of metal out of the way. Uh, with a subtle approach of using a big screwdriver on it, which of course doesn't work. So, uh, hence back to using the inevitable pair of pliers. And we've almost got it there. So, let's just try and pull that up. What I'm trying to do at the moment is to make a tab with this. Could have been uh, a lot easier when I did this yesterday if I'd left the metal bit out. There we are, that's now loose. Right, okay, so now we've straightened that out a little bit. So there, in theory, we should now be completely isolated. And let's just put this back on the track from the track. Now, just to prove that, I use my uh, digital multimeter um, just to uh, check resistance and make sure that everything's working. So there's the actual uh, unit itself, which uh, works quite well by having a, an audible beep on it which you should be able to hear now, so that's uh, a circuit. So first of all, uh, connection with one rail, let's make sure we can't get anything with that. So yeah, that's open circuit there, as is that one. So second rail, we'll try that. Same thing again. And then just to make sure that we are doing the right thing, we'll just see uh, which one of these it works, and probably it'll be the other one, uh, which indeed it is. So we'll try this here, which is where the connection should be. And of course that's not working. Just make sure we're on properly. Right, okay, let's try this. Come here. So yeah, we've got a good connection there, and then try to the other rail is through there. So that's good. So no connection there again, just check that twice. Never never hurts to check things lots of times, especially if it's clumsy as I am. So there we can see no connections. So, oh, multimeter away for the time being. So now we've isolated the the power, the locomotive from the track. So the next thing to do now is to actually begin some soldering. So first thing to do, and uh, I've started this already, is to um, cut the connection off the end of the diode which will form uh, one end of the uh, circuit so we'll keep this wire for later for connection to uh, power up the front light um, so I've got this one connector here which will which will give me one half of the uh, which will plug onto the motor quite easily so that will give me one of my pickups and then we've got the second pickup here which again will just uh, snip that one off ready for soldering so, also in vision here is, uh, you can see the solder my, and my uh, little crocodile clips, so we'll uh, set this up ready to solder some wires and uh, try and be lazy and do two, two at once. So, uh, having dropped it, we'll start again. Uh, okay, so first thing to do is to strip off an appropriate length. So first of all, uh, check, check to see what we're going to do, make sure that we're not going to chop the wire in pieces, which uh, we would do, we'd, uh, we'd actually cut it completely off the insulation so best thing I find with this is always to work down from too much rather than too little so uh, let's do a bit of uh, strip the, the wire off that which is a uh, nice nice firm pull off there which is good which means that we're not taking too many of the internal wires off so there's one there and the second one here off the locomotive itself make sure you uh, keep the strain off the actual wire from the machine, otherwise we'll lose it. Uh, there we go. So first wire through there and 
like I said, we're trying to be lazy and solder the two at once. Uh, one thing to do is to gently twist the ends over. That makes it easier to solder and makes the wires stay together better. So we've got one there. So that one's done. Let's get this other one that I keep dropping all the time. And then just, as I say, gently twist the ends of the wire over so that they all mesh together, which makes it nice and easy for soldering. So I'll put the two of those in my crocodile clip holder, which makes uh, soldering nice and easy to hold. Um, and soldering iron. The key to uh, to soldering this one is, uh, first of all, make sure that your iron is very clean. So I'm wiping it on the uh, the, the white on the on the sponge there to get any solder off, and then try and solder as quickly as possible. Starting from the top down, just make sure, make sure the solder is melted. Leave it like this, like that. Just a, a quick dab on there. Uh, try not to burn all the flux off because then uh, you need that for making the joint later on. So very very quickly. That's it. Nice blobby bits of solder. Not the uh, not the prettiest in the world, but it gets the job done. So first two wires are ready and, and will uh, ready and. Take two. Wires are now ready to go, having now been soldered up, so we'll put that one down there, that one down there, and change over to this other connection, which we need to uh, just solder up. So there's that there, which has got the remains of the uh, diode uh, lead sticking out of it, so that should form us a, a nice contact for soldering on to. So there we go, just made some solder on there, run it for a little bit. There we are. Dropped a bit of solder on my mat, but uh, that's what it's there for. So there, uh, yeah, yeah. Nice connection on there. Get rid of the uh, the vapors, which are always uh, nice to breathe. Not. And there we have. We've made the connections now, ready to uh, attach back to the motor. And all we need to do now is to start to put the harness on. So now I've got the harness um, with the, the plug at the other end which goes into the uh, DCC chip which you can see just there and at the other end it's got the remains of uh, an 8 pin socket where most of which has fallen off. Now I'm going to be hard wiring this one which is probably not the, uh, the cleverest thing in the world because I don't have uh, a socket to go on the other end, I must buy some of those. Uh, so first thing to do is to uh, cut off the wires as close as possible to the socket itself, uh, or the plug rather than the socket. Um, so there we are. We will keep the uh, the, the pin itself, the pin set, because that might be useful at some point in the future. I always keep everything right. Okay, so to actually wire this up, what we need now are the grey and the orange wires. They will connect to the motor. So let's just coil those out first of all. So that's the grey wire. That's the orange wire, and this one's the grey one. So these two we're going to send to uh, these two we're going to send to the actual motor itself. So we'll keep those to one side, and then to pick power up from the track, we need the red and the black wire, which are these two. So we've got those two pairs at the moment. So there's the red and the black and the uh, brown and the orange. What we don't worry about at this point is trying to get the red and the black in the right place uh, or the connections on the, on the, or rather the connections to the motor, the grey and the uh, orange are right, right way around. Uh, if that's, if we end up with those being the wrong way what we'll do is just reset uh, the CV values in the chip just to reverse the power to the motor to make it go forwards for forwards. So no worries with that. Uh, so let's just coil the other wires out of the way for the moment. So um, we'll tie a little knot in those so that we don't, uh, well not a knot, just uh, loop them round on each other so that they're uh, nicely out of the way. So keep it nice and simple, we've got four wires now so what we have to do now is just bear the ends of each one of these ready to make connections on all various different lengths uh, and we'll see how that gets on as we actually, uh, as we actually work on the inside. 
So with this I generally find that uh, the wires aren't long enough so that's why I'm not uh, going out my way to shorten them. So I have to make the cutters a little bit uh, tighter on these because they're a bit narrower than the uh, wires that came off. So there we are, that's the first red one done. And black. So those are my connections to the track. And then the grey and the orange which are connections to the motor. So one of those and finally the other one. Oh, and that's the one that didn't decide not to come off of course. Right, pliers time now, because that's the hopefully you can hold these things by hand, but sometimes uh, you just need a, a pair of pliers just to hold it. Right. It's better to, if you can, not use pliers because uh, it puts a lot of uh, pressure on the wire. I don't know if you can see that there, it's just ever so slightly uh, kinked, the uh, the insulation on the, on the wire. Hence why you try to use your fingers if you can. But the, these things can be awkward, so that one left itself out. Right then, so my connections I've got so far, I've got the connections to the motor, which we've got currently still in the clamp, is one of the, the metal sides which is going to connect onto uh, the motor. So uh, we will attach the orange wire to it. Now what we have to do for this, what I like to do is put a heat shrink sleeve in on there and select one from the appropriate side of the box. Uh, and this requires another tool, uh, which uh, should be a pair of scissors, which are hiding just out of shot. So we make that just a bit bigger than the joint we're going we're gonna to make, so about that sort of size will be fine. So cut that off with a pair of scissors um, and slide this on the wire to begin with. So what we've got here is the connection that they've got in the, uh, in the clamp is going to be one of the two power connections to the track. So we'll try it off with the red wire. So first of all, remember to put your heat shrink sleeve in on first on the wire. Uh, that's a, a, a lovely mistake I like to make quite often. And then what we need to do is to try to best if you can sort of make some sort of physical connection around the wire um, which is not proving too easy so we've already got some solder on there so get the soldering iron now and um, just a little bit of a shot it's just, just just my hand there right okay let's just try and melt that solder and make sure we get a nice little bond there we go so a nice blob of solder on the top now if only my hands weren't shaking that would be good, so we'll let go of that in a minute. Blow on the solder to let it cool. Okay, so that's a nice solid connection there. Just, just test it gently with your fingers, make sure it doesn't come off. Uh, make sure you've got a good strong bond. Then, once you're happy with that, get your heat shrink sleeve in, put that over the top. And uh, this is where a pair of pliers comes in as well to stop it uh, sliding back down again. And uh, just to show how, how useful the soldering iron is, how you can use it for many uses, you just use that to melt the, uh, the heat shrink sleeve in over it. So gives it a nice and it reinforces the joint, makes it nice and solid so that uh, it's less likely to snap in the future. Any problems in getting it off, just use a knife to cut off the heat shrink sleeve in. Uh, well worth investing in. Um, try not to touch the actual wire itself as part of this and the other uh, art is in terms of trying to get it all sides over to make it shrink sort of evenly around it. Um, that's I think as good as it's going to get so uh, let's uh, wipe the soldering iron get the smell of uh, molten plastic off it. So there we have first joint done um, so which, uh, if I put some white behind it, you should just be able to see that. So there we have nice red wire with a nice connection to it. So that's our first power connection made. Right, the second connection then will go to this wire on the bogey here. So we'll put that in my uh, helping crocodile clips there. And this one is going to the black wire. And again, first thing to remember is to put the heat shrink sleeve in on. So we get our trusty pair of scissors 
uh, cut this to about uh, about that much, about a centimetre's worth this this time, in terms of where we're going. Fit that to the wire to begin with. Uh, so make sure we've still got the black wire at this point. So still got my grey and orange for later. So there's the, the black wire on there. And just wrap that around the uh, wire as before. So as I said, try and make a connection if you can, a physical link between the two wires. Uh, ideal world you'd uh, mix them together. So there we go. I think that's just about got it. So trusty soldering iron, a uh, nice blob of solder to melt. So we should be in luck. And there we go. Try not to overheat it at this stage, just make sure the solder flows nicely. Just make sure that uh, if you overheat it, the flux will uh, will dry out and then we'll end up with uh, the dreaded dry joint. So there we are. So just blowing it gently just to cool it down a bit. And again, as before, we just slide up the heat shrink sleeve in. Oh yeah, having checked first of all, a nice bit of gentle pressure on there, that feels nice and sound. So, you know, we've got a good joint there. So, up comes our heat shrink sleeve in. Again, we'll hold that on with the pliers, so we don't uh, burn our fingers too badly. And away we go with the soldering iron again. So, it tends to try and run away a little bit, but uh, once it starts to shrink, it starts to grip the wire. So make particular attention to make sure you try and get the ends. So there we are with that one. So let's blow a bit of air on it. Got a bit silvery under the lights there. I'm not sure if uh, some of the solders come through. Uh, yes, unfortunately, a bit of solder come off the side. The solder iron on there, so uh, that should be fine. Uh, we'll be all right with that one. So. Here we have ready connected uh, power to uh, our clip now. So both sides are now soldered in. So all we have to do now is make our connections to the actual motor itself. Um, one other thing I should have mentioned earlier on is that we did remove the uh, the, the suppression capacitor. I showed it on the back of my hand. Uh, I took that off the motor earlier yesterday because you don't need that for DCC. It will interfere with the chips. That's normally placed on here across the two contacts. Um, in this particular model, it's not soldered on, it's just bent over the contacts. So just unbend them and then throw that away. So uh, that, that'll be, uh, that's no good for anything. So we're left now with our two connections now to make to the actual motor itself. Now we could solder those straight onto the actual tabs that are sticking up there. Uh, however, I have got uh, this one wire from previously. To, to make a connection one side and uh, we'll uh, we'll have a look in my uh, I'll have a look in my box of uh, of bits to see if I've got anything which I can uh, which I can find another one from so uh, slight pause whilst I go and have a look and see if I've got another connection about that sort of size so in true style uh, I couldn't find uh, a connector that small uh, the only thing I had was uh, something big enough to uh, fit on cars. So what I've done is got myself a, a piece of wire to replace it, uh, which uh, will cut to length in a minute. So this gives me the opportunity to solder it onto the actual motor itself. So I'll show you how that's done. So we'll make that first connection uh, to begin with. So first thing to do is to uh, strip off an appropriate length of wire. Uh, remembering that this wire is probably slightly thicker than the wires we used before so let's try and make sure we don't take all of it off. So I'm cutting out a bit of a longer length this time uh, so that I can wrap it around and that's just come off nice and easily. So again uh, twist the wires together just to make it easier to solder. Right so what I'm going to look at doing now is just to uh, measure this a little bit. Fit this on here and then look at wrapping that round there. So we'll make a couple of loops ready to go on, which will require my trusty pliers. Uh, so we just put those on there. And yeah, that's a nice strong connection. So that's what we've ended up with, a bit of a loop there. So turning that over, that's how we're going to make the connection like that. Uh, 
if you could see it. There we are. All you can see is the back of my front of my hand. There we are. Let's put that on the back. So there's the wire there, all ready to go on. So we'll fit this on the uh, we'll we'll fit this on the motor like so. Um, oh yeah, one thing I've forgotten. Uh, we want to put on our trusty heat shrink sleeve in. So we just cut a, again about a centimetre of that. And uh, we'll find the scissors in a minute. So right there we are. So a little bit of that. Uh, we could have put this on after we'd done it of course because we, we aren't uh, we've got the other end of the wire is empty at the moment so that's that's all ready to go. But uh, just make sure we've got that there right. Okay, so reattach my wire to uh, the top of the motor which of course it's uh, not wanting to do at the moment so it's trying to be awkward so apologies for uh, just a picture of my hand at the moment uh, there we are yes it's on now so what we just need to do ah it's falling off again just when I thought it was on okay let's try again so let's get that nice and firmly on there and then just uh, use a screwdriver just to tidy up the wires just make sure they make a nice firm connection there so nicely on the end of that okay so what we will do is hold this with our little clamp which tends to pull it off the end a little bit but uh, there we are. let's just angle that slightly there we are so that's made Good connection, just tidy up the wires a bit. So, ready to solder. And secret for this one is just try and do it as quickly as possible. Don't use lots of solder for this. Um, which is why I like using a nice fine point on a tip soldering iron. So, just a little touch of solder. There we are. Just get that to flow, which is done now. So, do that as quickly as possible, but then make sure that no solder drops anywhere. So, just have a quick check there, look into the mechanism, you know that's a nice sound joint. So release it from the clamp, and it feels quite nice as well. So again, nice, nice and solid, as you can see it's actually lifting it up. So let's see if we can get our heat shrink sleeve in over the end, to keep that nice and safely insulated. Um, which may be a bit of a challenge, you might not be able to want to play ball with this one. So, uh, yeah, looks like it's uh, quite fit on there. So what we may need is a slightly bigger bit. So let's uh, delve into the bag, where we have some, uh, the next size up of heat shrink sleeving. So we'll, we'll give this a go. And what we might have to do is, is to uh, double cover this, because this stuff is probably too large in diameter to actually uh, go fit over the wire nicely so we might put uh, the existing piece over the end of that in a minute. So let's chop that off and let's pop that over the end. So yeah it's plenty big enough, probably too big so what we'll do is we'll take some of this off uh, so just cut a little bit off the top. Oh, pop this back in. And there we go. That fits on there quite nicely. So we'll also put another bit of uh, heat drink sleeve in on there. Just go over the end of the wire. Let's put that in there so we've got a, a really reinforced uh, joint. In fact, I'll, I'll make this one a bit shorter as well. Because otherwise uh, we'll have too much uh, rigidity coming off the motor for the connection. There we go. It's a, a nice connection there. So let's just move that out of the way whilst we get the soldering iron in. Make sure we clean any solder off the tip. We don't want to drop any of that on the motor because this is a real whiskey bit. And right, away we go. Let's try and shrink this in. So yes, it's clamping down now onto the other one. So yeah, that's a, that's a better fit there. So, and get underneath as well. So nice and tight on this. 
Uh, try not to touch the plastic at all because uh, obviously the soldering iron will do damage to the actual frame of the locomotive. It might have caught it a little bit, yes, we have unfortunately, but uh, not to worry it inside so that won't be a problem. So, nice yellow wire which will uh, which will bend slightly there, probably sit across the top of the motor like that when it's all nicely reassembled. So, all that remains now is to make connections to the orange and the grey wires. Which, uh, which will be done the same way as the other one. So again, just making solder joints. So we'll, we'll uh, be. I'll come back to you in a moment when I've made that connection. So here we are back again, as if by the uh, the magic of uh, television. Uh, let's just take the uh, helping hands out of the way. We've uh, wired in the yellow wire now connected to the chip. Um, I've also uh, made a connection to the brown wire, which I did earlier. Uh, which I showed you earlier, which uh, is a grey wire which will connect to the other side of the motor now, uh, which will just pop that on there, which therefore, let's just get that lined up nicely, there we are, and that's on. So now we've got our connections on the motor, and all that remains for the time being is this final connection here, which, although it goes on to the motor, is actually providing us a connection to the other terminals on the track. So that just slots in there. So now we are connected. Now one other thing to uh, note that I've uh, I just realised as we go along is that the little LED that sits in here is actually connected to the track as well. Now the connection comes up through here so what, I, what I'll do is I'll just cut that for the time being and then we'll wire that one up uh, once I've figured out how the function lamps work. So just cut that off. So nice and safe now. So we've got a dangly wire there which we'll, we'll tuck in there out of the way. So we should all be correct now. So let's just have a check to make sure that um, we've not done anything we shouldn't have done. So we'll introduce the uh, digital multimeter back in again. So just make sure it's working. So yeah, that works. So on the track there we should now have a connection uh, to or well, we shouldn't be connected to either of the connections on the on the on the on the locomotive, which in fact we aren't with that one. And try the other one. Definitely not connected there. Right. Okay. So um, what we can't do is see whether we've got connections here and there in terms of how this works, uh, because we haven't got anything to go inside the pins there. So. Um, the only thing to do now is to try it out. Uh, we'll just uh, we'll keep the top off for the moment, even though it looks ugly. So plug your chip in, uh, just get sure that it's the right way around, and a bit of a bit of a, a fix in this one. And uh, there we go, nice and tightly in there. Uh, when eventually I finish the job, it'll rest inside there quite happily. There's a nice little slot for it in there. We'll just tuck that diode out of the way for the time being. So there we are. One setup converted to DCC. Hopefully that should all be working. So the proof in the pudding is to put it on the track and we'll see how it works. So let's move over to the test track. So here we are on the test track. Um, so first things first, we've uh, plugged it in that trusty Hornby Elite. So first thing to see is, uh, is it going to blow up when I turn the power on? So as you can see we're in emergency stop at the moment so let's just turn that off. Power's on and nothing's gone bang. So that's good. So fortunately it looks like the control is all set ready set to number three which should be the default address of the locomotive. So fingers crossed let's see if it moves. And indeed it does. So let's bring it back again. So, a successful job. So the only thing left to do now is to figure out how we get the wires to work on the functions. So um, just a little bit of testing with the multimeter to just see what sort of voltage we've got for this. Uh, and 
we'll be all ready to roll. Uh, the next job to do is actually get the lights working. So, having done a bit of reading on the internet, I've uh, discovered that uh, I have to turn the function key on as well as uh, which wires are connected up to which. So, what I've done to this one is uh, wired up the existing bulb down here with a resistor, which is uh, just shown at the which is at the top here, together with an LED for a reversing light as well. So without any more ado, we'll just uh, turn the controller on, and there we go, lights to the front, one press of the controller later, and that's the rear light working. So I'll tidy up all this wiring, stick everything down, and then we'll uh, test run it on the track. So here we are, this is the final model. So just to uh, show you the uh, functions as they all work, first of all we'll turn the lights on. So there we are, we're set to go forwards. So just a, a quick test run to demonstrate uh, it's still moving. And just to back it up. And off we go. And as you can see, the red light's on now. So just move her forward a little bit. Here she'll go. Just falling off the end of my track. It's just to take her forward a little bit. Right. And just to show you the wiring in closer detail, show you what I've done. As you can see there, there we are. This is a, a close-up of uh, what we, uh, how we've tied the wiring up inside. So all that remains now is to run it on the track, and uh, job's finished. So yes, she is all finished and just needs the DCC tuning to make it run very well. I've just got the end coach to refurbish and then my high speed train will be back in full service.